everybody, it's Tuesday, it's Matt on Learning Lockdown. Yeah, I practiced that. What are we doing today, Matt? Well, we have got our clocks. We know how to read this clock. We know how to read this clock. So we're done. <sighs> but are we? You see, in life, there are times that we need to know what time it is, but also what time it's going to be. For example, I might set off to get to work at seven o'clock and I need to be in by 7.30. But my sat nav says, ah, it's going to take 40 minutes to get there. Now remember, I set off at seven o'clock. It's gonna take me 40 minutes to get there. Well, minutes, I'm gonna move my minute hand. And I'm gonna move my minute hand forward 40 minutes, okay? Let's count on and move the minute hand. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. There we go. But wait. I need to get into work at 7.30, so I'm late. So one really important skill we're telling the time is knowing what time it will be if we move forward in time, or maybe we can move back in time and say, well, if I need to be in work by 7.30, it takes me 40 minutes to get there, when should I leave? Well, here, I'd move backwards because I know I need to be there at 7.30. So well, let's go back and do my 40 minute journey in reverse to see what time I should have set off to make sure I get there by 7.30. So let's count back 40 minutes. Now here you can say, but you're gonna start at zero down here. But zero is always at the top. Yes, zero is always at the top when we're reading time, but here we're just counting how many minutes on or how many minutes back. So we can start wherever the minute hand is really. So zero, let's go backwards. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Right, my minute hand's gone back 40 minutes, but what happened? Well, it passed by the 12. So it passed seven o'clock. I went into the previous hour. What was the previous hour from seven o'clock? Well, it's six. So at the moment, on a digital time, it would look like this. I'm in the sixth hour now, and there's been 50 minutes. And this we know is called 10 to seven. So I'm can't leave at seven o'clock. If I need to get somewhere by half seven, I need to leave at 10 to seven. Those descriptions might have been really quick, but I'm trying to get the point across that it's really important that we know how to count on and count back on a clock to find out different times. Today's task involves exactly that. We've given you some times on the clock and we might give the words earlier or later because we might want you to find out what 20 minutes later the times would be or what the time was 30 minutes earlier. So later means time is moving forward, what's it going to be in the future. Earlier is what it was in the past. So we would move in the opposite direction, anti-clockwise. Right, let's have a look at a couple of examples and one thing that really might catch you out today. Here's a time on our board, four o'clock. Let's go nice and simple first of all. Let's just move the minute hand. We want to go to 55 minutes later. No problem. We just move the minute hand, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. I haven't gone past the 12, so I'm not into the next hour. My hour hand might have moved across a bit, but it's definitely not got to the next hour. So digitally, I'm now on 4.55 or 525. Let's reset the clock to some other time. Quarter past six. This time, I want to know what it was two hours earlier. Hmm. Well, if I'm only known two hours earlier, does my minute hand need to move? Well, not exactly, I can keep it at quarter past, because it's my hour hand that's moving. Because I'm quarter past six, two hours earlier, well, let's move the hour hand two hours back. Now remember, we use the hour scale now, not the minute scale. One, two, oh, that was simple, quarter past four. So if we're just moving the minutes, most of the time we can just move the minute hand. If we're just moving the hours, we can just move the hour hand. But sometimes if we're moving the minute hand, the hour hand might move as well. Let's have a look at this one. Quarter to three. Hmm. I want to know what time it will be 45 minutes later. Well, let's go slowly here. Quarter to three. Well, I want to move on in a clockwise direction 45 minutes. Let's go slow. Moving the minute hand. Five, 10, 
15 minutes have passed. Well, 15 minutes have passed so far. We need 45, but we've moved 15. And I'm now at an o'clock time. So my hour hand should have moved to that three. Very important. I've moved 15. I want to do 45. So I need to carry on counting. I'm at 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. I've moved all my minutes, but you can see now that my minute hand is at the half past. Well, I've, as long as I've moved that hour hand to three previously when I got to 12, well, I know now I'm further past three, so I'm half past three. The difficulty here would have been if I reset and I just moved my minute hand 45 minutes, but left my hour hand where it was, and at a quick glance, that would have been half past two. But straight away, you should be stopping and saying, well, it can't be half past two because I was already at quarter to three and I want to be later on in the day and half past two is earlier in the day. So the important thing there was to recognize when the minute hand passed 12 going forward, my hour hand should have moved as well. My hour hand should always move at a slower rate, but especially when it goes past the hour, you should always remember that the hour hand should also go past the hour. So here the right time was half past three. This works as well for going backwards. If your minute hand goes back past 12, make sure your hour hand goes back into the previous hour as well. Bit of a tricky one that today, but let me know how you got on and send in your work as always to learnalockdown at gmail.com or at learninglockdo1 on Twitter. We'll see you a little bit later.